guys, I feel like I'm wearing this hat in every video, uh, but today it's actually great a great segue to talk about our topic for this video, which is going to be my various head coverings uh, and how I deal with covering my hair as an Orthodox Jewish married woman. Hope you enjoy! Today what I want to do is go through a few of my basic options that I have when covering my hair and also explain how they work. Before we begin, I just want to say that if my Shetelmacher, the woman who makes your wigs, if she were to be watching this, uh, she would say, oh my gosh, like your wigs totally need to be washed. Uh, I am actually planning on doing that later today, but I really just had this, uh, I had time to schedule for filming this video now. So I figured I'd do it now, but ultimately you'll see like my wig hair is not looking at its like finest, uh, simply because uh, like our normal hair, it needs to be washed, combed, uh, and definitely my wigs need a little bit of TLC at the moment. My first option is going to be my full wig. Future Amalia here, so I don't know where my clip of my full wig went, which was my first clip. So I'm just going to refilm that part for you here quickly. That's why I'm wearing a different outfit. Okay, so here we have my full wig. This is a lace top wig. You see how if you look very, very closely at the, uh, at the middle part of the scalp, it's almost like a stocking material. And then the rest of the wig is a typical wig, wig cap. This particular wig, the way it works is I have a sewn in velour band to keep it tight on my head. And you'll notice up until the front, they um, they put in baby hairs um, to go with my natural hairline uh, to just make it look very realistic uh, towards my actual hair. So now I'm gonna put it on. This is what my full wig looks like on. You'll notice sometimes with lace the you'll see a little bit of the lace sticking out in the front that's just life that's they haven't figured out how to deal with that element of it yet but i don't think it's so noticeable and basically the goal with these lace parts because they're kind of see-through one you can line it align it with your own natural part so that it already gives it that typical color of a part and another thing i do which also just makes it easier is this one happens to be revlon color stay but you can use any concealer or just any um, like neutral tone makeup and uh, you take a brush I anyway have to reapply today and you put it put it over the middle part to give it that kind of skin tone uh, so this is like a cool little trick maybe I'll teach uh, if anyone's interested I could do a whole video just on my wig maintenance how I wash them and all of those things some people say to put it along the line of your actual wig and that's how you do it with the makeup element of this wig. In addition, the way I tend to like to wear this particular piece, sometimes I'll wear it down, but frequently um, I pull out a little bit of my own hair right over there. Uh, and then alongside the wig, I will pull it back, whether I put it behind my ear or I go around my head and just tie it back as I do with many of my pieces, just cause I always enjoy that look on my natural hair. Uh, there's a number of things to do with it, but depending on how realistic I want it to look, sometimes I actually want it to look significantly less realistic because otherwise people sometimes don't realize I'm married and in certain contexts that makes me uncomfortable. Uh, but sometimes, especially for like nicer occasions, I really like it when the hair just looks like gorgeous and natural. This next piece is going to be my fall. Uh, like I said, these really need a wash. So usually it's a bit curlier. Right now it's a little uh, more frizzy. Um, but this is definitely more, both of um, both of my wig and my fall, my fall starts, uh, it's a wig that starts a little farther back. I'll put it on in a second. Um, they both they both match my hair at different times of year. I got my wig a little bit later on in the year than I got my fall, so my wig is very much my summer hair color, and this is very much my winter hair color. So they're different colors, but they still, I think, are very accurate towards my natural hair, uh, except this one's definitely more of a wavy texture um, as compared to my natural hair, which is a bit more curly, like my, like my full wig. So the way this works is it has a comb on the inside. You could use the comb or you could use a band. This one's a lace headband, which I would also theoretically use for my wig, but actually I'll show it to you, even though it's a little confusing. I should have mentioned this before. Um, my Shetelmacher sewed in um, a similar band into the wig so that I don't need to worry about it for this wig. But for the fall, I have a band or a comb. The combs I find hurt my head a little bit. I just tend to have a sensitive scalp. Uh, and so I use these velour bands that help remove some traction. They're not 100%. Definitely combs hold it better. Also with my full wig, 
I know as people who use combs, definitely it holds in place more. But for me personally, one, it's better for your hair and two, it just feels more comfortable. I'm very happy to use them. So now let me show you what it looks like on. Just move this a little forward because this is the amount of hair I'm comfortable showing on camera. But essentially this is how a fall works. It starts farther back. You could also put it on farther back. Sometimes I do that. Just as I said, I'm just trying to show the amount of hair I would show. Uh, like I would show on to you on camera. It starts farther back, so it you wear it with a headband. So essentially when you have on a fall, you just pull the head, I usually put the headband on my neck and then pull it into a place on my head. Um, and with this one also, I feel like a lot of the time this is just always how I wore my hair prior to getting married. I'll like tie it back a little bit, which also makes it feel more natural. Uh, and like I said, this is like a little, it definitely needs some de-knotting and a uh, good wash right now. Uh, but I also, I really love this piece. It's very, um, it's very good when you want to feel a little sportier or just for events. I tend to wear my wig, sometimes I'll wear it during the week, but usually I'll wear it for a fancier occasion or for Shabbat. And my fall tends to be very good here functionally during the week. It also, th this is always a very mixed debate for me, but in Israel in particular, wearing a headband like this thick sometimes just symbolizes in general to people that you're mar married as opposed to my wig, which a lot of the time people can't tell. Uh, and so depending on what situation situation I'm in, even though I think my wig is fully um, halakhically or according to Jewish law, okay, uh, sometimes I prefer this because the same way maybe looking at an engagement ring or a wedding ring helps people know what your status is. Sometimes even if I want to show some hair, um, I prefer wearing it with a headband so people kind of put that association together that I am married. But again, it really depends on what the occasion is. The final wig option I'll show is this. Um, not sponsored, but this is a bandit. My mother had one growing up, so she actually thought it was a good purchase for me when I was getting married, and I'm very grateful. Uh, this is a bandit. So essentially, it works like a headband. Uh, I'll try to put it on up over my hat so you can understand the process. Uh, it works essentially like a headband. It has Velcro both on both sides. You put it around your head and go like that. You put this under hats and have hair sticking out. There's another concept called a hat fall, which would actually have no hair on top, but something like lace. Um, and then you would just put a hat on top. This is essentially a hat fall, just without that top part. So it makes it significantly cheaper. So now I'll show you what it looks like on. This is what my bandit looks like on. It will say that as someone who washes their own full fall, I really find that I don't necessarily use my bandit as often. I don't live near my Sheitelmacher, but in areas where people do live near their um, Sheitelmacher, a lot of the times they'll just take it to get washed at their Sheitelmacher. And in that case, they don't know how to do it at home. And so when there's a concern for letting it get knotty on top, um, and so that's why they don't like putting it under hats. However, because I wash mine myself, I find sometimes if I want a longer hair, I'll literally just put it on under the same way I do this one. And so it comes in a little less handy for me, but I still really like it. In addition, I also just think my head's a little small and I think I do want to get it resized because there's a lot of bulk up there as I have to pull the Velcro really tight. Uh, but aside from that, I love this piece. My mother has had it for years um, as well. And it's really, it stays gorgeous uh, for a long time. Uh, and you really like, I've never, my mother, I don't think I've ever seen my mother wash it or comb it. Uh, it just really stays um, quite nicely. Aside from hats, which uh, you've all seen me wear, uh, cause I literally wear this hat in like every video. Um, the other two um, ways in which I cover my hair are going to relate to scarves. Uh, so I'll show you the different scarves. It's important for me to mention that the velour bands are also used when you wear a scarf, uh, just to keep it on your head. Okay, so I wear scarves in one of two ways. I wear scarves either like this, which I think of as the more American style, where I simply, I just tie it once in the back. Um, and then usually as like a stylistic thing, I'll move over the poles to the side. I think that looks kind of nice. Uh, and then you just have a, you just have a basic uh, little triangle going down at the back. Uh, and this way you just fold your scarf into a triangle if it's a general scarf or you, um, or you buy specific square scarves that you just fold once. Uh, other, most scarves are typically rectangles and then you fold it into a square and fold it into a triangle. Um, but this one is that style that I do. Uh, and usually I'll, as you've seen me do with most things, I'll, I tend to 
pull out a little bit of hair on the side. If anyone would like a video um, or me to answer questions about specifically what my opinions are regarding hair covering, um, both on a philosophical level and also what halakhic standards I hold myself to, uh, I'd be happy to make that. I don't feel like it's such a private thing for me. Uh, so just let me know in the comments. Um, but this is one way I wear my scarves. I tend to wear this way more frequently. Um, it's just because as an American, I've noticed that I'm wearing scarves in what I would call the more Israeli way, uh, which is wearing scarves a little more with more volume on your head, as I'll show you in a moment. Uh, sometimes I feel confident, but a lot of the time I don't. And also because of these specific amounts of hair, I leave out of my scarves. I um, and Usually a lot of the Israeli styles not all of them, but a lot of them, I always feel look better when people have different halakhic opinions and leave out a little bit more hair. Uh, and so I always feel a little self-conscious um, wearing the larger styles with less hair out, but that's just a me thing. There are plenty of women who do it and look gorgeous. Um, I just always feel a little bit um, weird with it. All right, this scarf is just folded once across. It's a rectangle. Uh, and all we're going to do, I, usually, I typically would make my bun a little flatter in the back with clips, um, but I'm not doing that today. But anyway, I maybe just want to show you the back. Um, and essentially all you do is you pull the scarf pieces to the sides again, and the other one I pulled the scarf pieces under each other. Um, and you simply, um, also so plenty of people like that bump in the back, I just personally um, do not. Um, and you fold up the sides as neatly as you possibly can. Just do a neat fold. And then you pull it over, you make sure it's not too far forward when you flip it on. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. I'm by no means an expert at this. I tend to not wear my scarves as often like this. However, I do occasionally. Um, and then essentially there's many ways you could just pull it back down like that. That's like a classic. Um, personally, a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll go through once and tie it or I'll make a knot on top. I'll make a knot on top, maybe move it back and then um, either leave, usually sometimes I'll leave one of the pieces out and you just find a place to tuck the other one. Uh, and then I move back the scarf to where I want it positioned on my head. Sometimes when that happens, this will start falling back. I'm not gonna really fix it because um, I'm not intending on keeping this on afterwards, but you, you just kind of need to move it back a little forward. Um, that's kind of how you do it. I pull out the pieces I pull out, um, and this is the final style. I don't wear this one as often. A lot of the times if I do, I wear it in Shabbat or something. Uh, even though a lot of Israelis will wear scarves in the workplace, personally, uh, as an American, to me, it still feels a little strange because in like most workspaces I worked at in America, coming in wearing a scarf was seen as less professional. Um, and so I'm not used to that yet. Um, but overall, I think it's a fairly cute way to wear it. I'm just personally not there yet. So in terms of the scarf styles, it's just worth mentioning that I just showed you two ways, but there's a lot of ways uh, people wear scarves. Sometimes people will do like two scarves. Sometimes people will tie it around the back of their head to create like a bun on top of their bun. Um, I tend to do that less frequently. Um, but there's a, numer a number of ways to wear it. Also with wigs, there are so many different types of wigs. There's ponytail wigs. Um, I have a lace top, but there's lace fronts. There's um, there's regular wigs, like all of these different uh, little nuances uh, within the uh, within the wig world as well, uh, which I would, if anyone was interested, I'd make a more detailed video, but um, one, I'm not a full expert, uh, and two, I wasn't sure it would be as interesting. Uh, but essentially, this is what I do uh, in my personal life. Those are the basic ways I cover my hair. I realized really, uh, I think we need to do a whole separate video about a Q&A about why I cover my hair and uh, those types of things. So please, on the bottom of this video, leave some questions and I'll talk a little bit more. Uh, you can ask me any questions about the various methods that we spoke about in this video about how I cover my hair. You can ask me about why I cover my hair. Really, um, feel free to uh, ask anything. Uh, I'm more than happy to share. Uh, and um, I really hope you enjoyed this video and that it was informative uh, and interesting. And as I said, please leave some comments and we can all learn a little bit more together through doing a Q&A about um, hair covering.